In this 100th episode, we talk about public relations, but post-pandemic public relations. So what happened during the pandemic and what, what happened after. And for this 100th episode, my guest is David Tremblay, my partner. So welcome, David. I'm really happy that you're there sharing this 100th episode with me today. Well, thank you so much for having me. And congratulations. 100 episodes is a, it's quite an accomplishment. I know. It's crazy, yeah? So thank you uh, for joining me. And so for those who haven't listened to episode 10th and 85th, you can go back if you want. Uh, I, I find the episode 85th really interesting because we this is where I'm talking with David. It's the third time he's my guest on the podcast. So a, episode 85, we talk about Canadian market versus US market because David has a lot of uh, client for whom uh, he manages public relations in this market, the US and the English Canadian market as well. So it's interesting to talk about what are the differences between those two markets. And um, also for those who want to learn a little bit more about David, so you can listen to episode 10. And uh, before we jump into this uh, this subject of what's different now or is there, is there anything um, new post-pandemic uh, regarding public relations, um, I, I wanted to introduce you a little bit more. So David is really a public relation expert and highly, highly, highly sought for is knowledge in marketing combined to what's happening in social media. And I'm sure we'll be talking about what's happening, what's new in social media at the end of this podcast. So thank you again for joining me. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think anything is different or any trends that are now that we have to live with now forever? <laughs> Since the pandemic, well, forever I don't know. We we never we never will, right? Forever is, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. But um, what really changed? I feel like um, that the clients are more legible, like they know more about what's happening on the web and what are the you know direct result of PR. What I mean by that is basically if we do a campaign or like a media will post a link and people will click on the link, well, you'll see that they will see and they track how much traffic is directed to their website. And usually when we have like a big feature where like a digital or in print and everything, and then the day of, they see, oh, there was a huge, huge, huge spike in traffic in, on my website on that specific page for that product. Do you have something to do with that? <laughs> That's kind of now <laughs> our discussion that we have. This is true because yeah, everything is traceable. So we yep. can, you know, Google analytic or they can go and look and they even know what publication, uh, where it's coming from, where the traffic is coming from. This is true. And everybody's obsessed since the pandemic by the web. And it's completely understandable because everything was closed. So for many of our clients, this is what saved them. And they realized that they could sell so much more <laughs> online. Remember that? It really um, accelerated um, the pace of everything, but also like the kind of entering the web in a more serious funds so from some of our clients. Some brands were not totally there or, you know, their product listing was not up to date or their inventory was not connected enough to the website. And I do feel that in the first few months of the pandemic, when, as you just mentioned, everything was closed, they needed to kind of uh, make sure that everything was on point and connected so at least they could sell uh, and they could, you know, continue um, operating uh, on an everyday basis. Yeah, thanks, thanks to internet. So not everything died so they could make sales. It's interesting too, because it's not because they were so late, some of them, because in some markets, uh, it was not really well accepted that clients, let's say beauty brands were, are sold in pharmacy in some, you know, depending on the country you're in. Um, if the network is really uh, through some, uh, it could be a chain of store too. But anyway, so in, in this case, this client, they, they were selling through pharmacies and pharmacies didn't really like when our clients were selling products online. So some of them, you know, they were there, they were really like discreet almost, like not even telling people <laughs> they were selling online. But then when they had the chance to do it, and it's funny because now there's nobody that can stop them, which is, which I, good for them, you know. Exactly. So they know now. Uh, and I, I, 
I haven't spoke to many of them, so I, I know some of them are still increasing their online sales, but I know some other clients. There's another client of ours also that sold a lot online during the pandemic, but now that everything is reopened, they don't sell as much. No, exactly. And hopefully this will be <laughs> uh, redirected <laughs> to the the real boutiques or the the drugstores or the, you know, the, the pharmacies. Um, a good thing as well about that it was that clients, brands were kind of more aware of what product uh, really attracted people, right? They were, oh, we sold so many of this one and none of this, you know? And so there were, it was kind of a great, uh, if you were doing things right, you could really kind of manage your inventory to, you know, what's possible. I know the deliveries and everything was really something during the pandemic, but um, you could really manage or at least know, oh, my clientele is really looking for that product. So maybe we should do something with that. So there was a lot of things that ha were happening during the pandemic in terms of realization. Um, I feel people were really online as well, really at the time, let's say more time to kind of look into like the data and look at the traffic and what's happening on the web and et cetera. So I do feel that a lot of our brands, a lot of marketing manager, clients, et cetera, really learn about, oh, what's the, you know, what's the path of my clientele online? What's the, my consumer path? What, what doesn't work? Where people leave my website? Why, you know, so there was a lot of discussion. Yeah, which what's we, their journey? Exactly. What's the journey, from? right? Yeah. And yeah. there was a lot of discussion during our calls, which were all video calls, obviously, but uh, a lot of discussion about that. And there was definitely something about, oh, what can we do to, let's say, create affiliate link? What can we do to create uh, those promo codes so we can really know and, tra and track and measure those, the success? And I'm, you, you know, I'm using air quotes here, but like the success of that campaign. Yeah, it's very interesting because some, some of them did understand how PR could really mm -hmm. help them because they were also doing, um, let's say, Facebook or AdWord campaigns, but they understood that having also PR was could be a, a huge advantage. We have some clients who don't um, buy a lot of on, online, a, a lot of advertising, and it, it, they really rely on, on PR. It also depends on the, on the type of product. I find some products are very niche and they get a lot of traffic from uh, what we are able to generate online um, but it so many things things happen <laughs> during the pandemic and because of the uh, web obsession some of our clients did hire more uh, online marketing um, digital marketing uh, agencies and those young agencies sometimes wanted to like oh let's take the budget of PR <laughs> let's get rid of them and use use the uh, use the what I call the, uh, the the PR budget and but I was interesting to see when we started looking where their traffic was coming from because they finally understood some of them that the 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 the, the best organic part of their marketing plan is performed by PR many of them didn't realize that or some of them don't know probably it's not something they're they're being taught and and they don't understand sometimes how PR works but and many many clients kept that kept us in the loop and yeah it was interesting to see that they really uh, some of them did understand really well what PR could bring them well they, they totally like obviously they realized with the SEO our search and giant optimization not, <laughs> not going to explain what yeah, SEO is but know, um, yeah. they kind of uh, understood that oh well there's a quality factor to the results so our you know our brand could go higher in the result on Google or any search engine right and, and, drink. and it was what was really interesting and they kind of understand oh media kind of act like experts online so if they do talk about us well google will say oh we might maybe some people will ask about it so we might put this brand you know higher in the results so and it's this is really a simplified version of what it is but uh, you know <laughs> uh, but it's really what happened and then when they saw that oh well we had a huge spike of traffic and then now our results are better when we type our name we're there or this product it's us that we'll you know and a good example is the PR agency that we are in, not a PR. You've seen a huge, huge, huge impact on the web and, and podcasts. Uh, and I feel like, you know, that's kind of uh, how we also, how we work. We want to 
test, right? <laughs> Everything we want to make sure yes, that... Yes, new tools, yeah. new platforms, and the podcast is one of them. And it's an incredible, incredible tool. And I even ha did a podcast on the secret of podcasts. If you want yeah. to know more, if you scroll in the list, you'll find that one. And that really re helped us because it's organic, right? Yeah. So what we're doing there is uh, we create content every week. So this is the 100 podcast. It's a perfect example. And we do one in French, one in English every week. So it's the... <laughs> My producer would say it's, it's the 200 <laughs> podcasts you are recording because he's doing the montage. He's setting everything up. So for him, it's uh, double, the, double the work. But it's interesting to see also that some clients did understand. Something I like to say is that Publicity. I'm not listening. We're not against publicity because we all we, sometimes we do uh, Facebook campaign as well, and it's it's publicity doesn't replace PR and PR doesn't replace publicity. So of course, in the best world, you do both. But sometimes, if you don't have a lot of money, <laughs> you can start by doing PR because something the ad advertising is not going to bring you is credibility. This is exactly what you mentioned. Like when you have a media talking about you know. Uh, a, a product, a so client. There's a, you know, there's a type of expertise that comes with that, right? When another source, an exterior source will talk about your brand uh, in a good way or um, it will definitely, oh, wow, this is legit. Like, this is legit. <laughs> It's really uh, what it is. Um, and you had like, an, I know an example um, of a client that came back to us uh, because he was basically saying, oh, I know what you've done because I, I had no time to do any advertising or chat around social media or on the web. And I just did PR and the results were amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, depending on the, on the product, we can say what it is. Actually, it's a product to help. It's a natural product to help people sleep and sleep, you know, uh, problems of sleep, sleeping problems is COVID, and, COVID anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus the COVID added another layer on, on, this, uh, on this trend. And yeah, then he said, oh my God, I didn't even have time to do an ad campaign and we were sold out. So this is like, may, it doesn't happen every week. We, should, we would love that to happen every week, but sometimes it does. This is why it's interesting to, to at least, you know, depending on the product that you have, Talk to a PR specialist or come to us, we'll tell you, you know, if it, we can do something for you or no, keep doing publicity. We're not against it. Another client of ours, that's all they do. And they use their social media platform. They make a lot of sales. They're ex extremely successful selling their products, but they, they haven't built their credibility and their brand. So this is what we're trying to tell them. <laughs> Put in an extra budget to, uh, you know, and you'll see with time, it takes time. So sometimes, you know, some some brands who really like created themselves and which is great. Like, you can sell online and be like crazy rich and which is, <laughs> and nobody knows you. So that's, but I find if you want to build something and you want a brand that's going to last in time, if you don't do PR ever, I think you're missing something. So... And I, we see brands do to make a lot of money and disappear. Uh, it happens like online. There are brands that existed online and for a certain period of time. And there's always a new one, a younger kid uh, <laughs> in his garage starting another company similar to yours. And let's say they, they, they are better, are charming their generations and... You know, they, they're going to eat it, eat you up and <laughs> eat your market shares, right? We've seen this too. Well, you know, by listening to this podcast, let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> it happens. Well, it, it's, it's not going to happen to us. <laughs> yeah. Because we're always learning new things and doing new things. And, um, And sometimes we hang on to all things because we had this discussion a few years ago. This is interesting because know that PR is still... A so relevant and we had that that uh that discussions a few times you and i should we keep like the nada pr public relations term there or many younger uh, agencies decided to become uh communication agencies so they they don't work exactly like we do but i'm like this is strange i think pr is going to be there as i say you know media still exists we'll see in five years but well if we, <laughs> yeah. take advantage of it they still exist exactly. you know let's you know talk to them let's make our clients visible there and uh, let's get them featured online and so yeah and and if we talk about public relation well there's and i've said that and i'm sure that if you listen you will listen to the 10th and the 85th uh podcast um 
well, I'm going to say that again, that public relations <laughs> is about relations and that what we need after a pan- pandemic, after isolation, after quarantining, it's definitely relations with people. So it's definitely even more relevant post-pandemic than it was before, I feel, on myself. But obviously, change is, you know, change have occurred. And now we're doing kind of a both, um, I would say, like, you know, um, virtual and in-person. It's definitely kind of a hybrid situation that we're living in. And I feel like now we're just trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be, you know, what's going to be over winning over the other. But today, to this day right now, like if we're talking about changes, it's definitely like the amount of video calls that we have, uh, the amount of, you know, virtual events that we have and still have to this day, uh, talking about a perspective of covering like North America, obviously some events are virtual, some events are in person, but virtual definitely gives that flexibility of journalists can be anywhere in the world and they can connect, right? Obviously, time zone oh, needs to be relevant. Disappear. But it's that's, no, disappear. exactly. There, because there's like an, uh, an accessibility uh, that is that we never had. Like, can you imagine doing one virtual event instead of doing five events, in-person events, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a difference in terms of cost, in terms of budget, but also in terms of uh, reaching out to people. Some people are remote and they just want to stay remote. They don't want to go <laughs> downtown to go to the event. So they're just going to connect and yeah. stream the event. Yeah. So that's definitely things that are changing and kind of are, um, have evolved as well. Uh, those, they have evolved in terms of, uh, how we present things, how we produ- like pro- <laughs> how we manage event, how we produce event as well, because now there's going to be a video component. So it's definitely a, something that kind of uh, like evolve and like really re- revolutionize the, the PR world. I agree with you. And uh, it's funny because we are also doing live event now. So, and we taught, we, we, we just, we did a test. We told our clients, let's, you know, you can participate to this event. We'll pay for the whole, <laughs> the whole thing. So we don't want you to invest money in because we're doing a test. It's, we don't know anymore what's going to happen. It was interesting to see uh, who came and, um, and probably this is something we should do. And I was talking to you in the French version of the podcast. I'm like, oh my God, maybe we should have also we should keep uh, virtual content let's say for example our event starts at 11 so maybe at 10 a.m we should do a tour because we were presenting those are multi-brand events that many uh, agencies used to do in the past so we decided to do one after more than two years and had been a while so we we didn't even think about that because we were, first of all, we were so excited to do an event. I was excited to do an event and meet people live that I'm like, no, let's not do anything virtual. But maybe you're right. Maybe we should combine, have a part that's virtual. And then, you know, for those, and you mentioned it too, that's another trend that we forget. It's, it happened all over the world, like from people in Paris, New York, London, um, you know, anywhere, big city, they decided to move out of the big cities and went you know, outside in, uh, they bought houses in a country house and, you know, uh, in a country. huge backyard and, and, you know, it's (laughs) (laughs) definitely. Uh, And also what is really interesting is like, you know, sometimes we'll think, oh, well, if we do the virtual event before, no one's going to go to, they're going to come to the in-person. I don't think that's true at all. I feel like some people really want to touch where you want to, you know, in the virtual thing that what's, what's different than when you meet for real is maybe, um, you don't have the same kind of direct, um, oh, let's, oh, do you want to try this? Do you want to touch that? Do you want to, you know, even though you, we sent everything in virtual prior, it's definitely not the same kind of exchange that we have with them. And it's not as curated. No, I'm seeing a a collection, you know, and looking at it and understanding what it means. And you're right. The look and feel, even, even clothing, you want to. Touching. Well, we can yes. definitely not send the whole collection to everyone who's connected online because that would be like 50 to 60 collection to send. So that's <laughs> definitely different for now. But let's yeah, say, you know, the in-person event, that's where, you know, they will see and touch and feel. So I do feel that um, that both will kind of be always there, but in-person will kind of gain popularity more and more again because people want to see each other, people want to meet, people want to, you know, have drinks together, people. So, um, and 
it, it's even for us, you know, we were excited to do an event and, you know, uh, it's kind of the, <laughs> you know, the, the, the proof. I think that, to see also, influencers love to do yeah. that too, because they say, Hey, here's here, I'm going to, they're going to be doing a real, a video or you know, TikTok, whatever. And it, for them, it's, it's content. We help them to create content because this is, some of them do that every single day. So it's a big job. And these events also help them do that. So this will still exists for sure. But I agree with you. The virtual part is really something that we have to always keep in mind and not forget. Yeah. Uh, regarding social media, what do you think uh, is going to happen? Because it's changing so fast. Well, now we see TikTok more and more. Well, we've seen um, the rise of TikTok during the pandemic. Obviously, what do you have to do in your living room on a Saturday at 2 p.m. <laughs> because you cannot go outside? Well, you're going to do some dance uh, and then share them on TikTok, right? So <laughs> that's definitely what happened. I feel like out of boredom, um, <laughs> people just, you know, went on that platform, which is really entertaining, really quick, really fast, fast paced. And it's um, definitely the right, like the pandemic has definitely been the rise of uh, TikTok in, you know, North America, that's for sure. Um, I do feel that um, because people were so much on social media, they don't want to see something that is too curated. They don't want to see something that is too paused because, oh, What's the difference with you and this, this other person or et cetera? So that's where, you know, Be Real, which is the new, new platform that, well, new, new. It's, it's been there for a few weeks slash months now, but um, it's it's where Be Real is basically the, the, re the answer to that kind of curated world is uh, basically, an, uh, you know, uh, an app that will take both selfie and what surround you. So you cannot just have this beautiful corner in your house and the rest is not as curated because people will see on Be Real. And it's also an education you have to take, you have to put, you have to post now. So, uh, wherever you are, maybe you're at the grocery, maybe you're watching TV or maybe you're at an event, right? But that's really what Be Real is all about. It's like maybe showing that, hey, oh yes, we were inside for two years, but people were, Still be the same. It's not that because you're an influencer, you're a media, or you're a VIP a star that sometimes you don't go to the grocery or you don't drive or you don't sit in yeah. front. So you're there's not always always yeah. super well dressed up and exactly. curated and wearing the perfect makeup and you know yeah that's for sure that's interesting. So people are some this is true. This is something I hear also among our young employees. Like sometimes they are tired to see those you know, famous big influencers that are like, it's always glitz and glam, as I say. And, but you, you of course, it's not the reality all the time. It's impossible. You cannot mm -hmm. live like that all the time. So this, I think it's a good thing. Well, I can't wait to see where it's going to go and how humans are going to. You know, this, this, the, the FOMO, like the fear of missing out or again, you know, there's something about like always uh, following those beautiful accounts and everything really inspiring. But then, you know, it's the balance when the aspiration becomes, oh my God, I'm anxious. I'm not invited anywhere. I don't <laughs> do my life. It's not as glamorous. <laughs> right. So it's, it's, I do feel that that's going to be great. Obviously we'll see how good it develops, but for now, you know, we're going to, we're going to go on TikTok and just look at all those <laughs> videos for hours. But yeah, it's not going to disappear, you said. So but yeah, it's it's always fun to see what's going to happen and the new the new trends. So it's funny because they're during the pandemic, the paper book uh, started to you know increase their sales and just went through the roof. So there's sometimes we don't know that we have surprises. So of course. Uh, magazines and the traditional printed magazine, it's never going to be as it was, but there's something sometimes in the, um, people want to be real and away from their screens, maybe. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like leaving your screen alone for a bit and just, you know, turning those paper, <laughs> those pages <laughs> uh, of a magazine, uh, it's definitely, definitely something nostalgic into that. And I feel like, you know, it's also comforting to just read a magazine and not be you know not have received those all those notifications while you're reading something just you know let it go a little and that, that's okay too you know let your mm -hmm. brain read as i say exactly, exactly ah so what can we wish you for the next um you know few weeks few months uh next year um well you know um vacations for now <laughs> time to relax and also you know kind of um a, big, a beautiful balance between video calls or an in-person event. I do feel there's something really inspiring with meeting with people, uh, but obviously the flexibility of the video calls allow us to do a little more. So 
you know, it's kind of a more of a balance between those two. I feel like that would definitely be uh, a great uh, way to uh, jump into fall, which is coming. So I wish uh, you less online meetings and video yeah. video calls, right? We have exactly. too many. This is true. Probably because now our clients see us and it's reassuring for them. Probably it was reassuring the pandemic, but it's something that's still there. So it has to diminish a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of um, <laughs> less <laughs> less online, yeah, less online calls, more offline coffees. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being my guest for this 100th Thanks, episode, David. David. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, so you can listen to some other podcasts as well. This is the 100th, my friends. So hopefully you You've enjoyed this little PR break and that we are inspiring you and you'll include PR in your marketing plan. And if you want to know more, of course, listen to our podcast and we'll be there next week. À la semaine prochaine. Hey, you want to learn more about how to implement PR strategies? Head on to nadapr.com and get on our list. You will also receive the Nada PR model on how to create a successful PR campaign. If you want to become a client, just send us an email to nada at nadapr.com. Talk to you next week. À la semaine prochaine.